Yeah. We're live. Okay. Welcome, everyone, to Blood on the Bayou, the Vampire of the Masquerade Chronicle. We're running here on Final Show Films. My name is Julia. I will be your storyteller for the evening. I am joined by a wonderful cast of great people, and we will start our introductions tonight with Shawnee, since I left you out last week. For <laughs> last week. Hi, I'm Shawnee, and I'm playing Guaya Vincente, the Asamite Sorceress. And then Jeremy? Hi, I am Jerry. I am playing uh, Catriona Giovanni. Uh, Giovanni. And Austin? Hi. Uh, I'm playing Rahab Graber, uh, who is the house I can't recall the name of. Yeah, Katif. Katif. That one. Yeah. Thank you. Katif, 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 however you want to say that. Yeah, I suppose mm-hmm. there's no actual house hierarchy to uphold that, is there? No one's no. going to. No, Plus, vampire right. words are weird. Uh, and no Katie. Hmm? Katie. Oh, my turn. Uh, hi, I'm Katie. I'm playing Mercy Ransom, who is a Toriador uh, tour guide. And Drevian. Hello, I am Drevian. I am playing Simon DeLuca, the Malkavian Hailer. Okie dokie. And as always, Black Lives Matter, trans rights are human rights. Eat the rich, fuck the Supreme Court, and Vince McMahon still. Yes. Even though he's gone. <laughs> For how long? Let's get into the game because that'll, oh. I, that'll be a that'll be a long conversation. <laughs> okay. I have thoughts. So, last we left off, uh, our group met at Simon's Tailor Shop, at which Simon had to depart and tend to some unexpected business that came to head. Reconvening at Kat's house uh, for another impromptu meeting, they met with Walter, uh, who quickly gave them the information from Simone as the identity of the new... Hold on. No, I messed that all up. Uh... Walter gave you guys the information that he learned from Elysium um, and at the same time Rahab was approached by Destiny and given the assignment of working with our group uh, she almost immediately reached out and set up a, a quick meeting at which the whole group once again met at the tailor shop and ex- exchanged pleasantries, which then moved to Lafitte Cemetery, at which the discussion of the nine-foot-tall monster from Clan Zamache was discussed yet again. Uh, taking the rest of the night, the coterie then ventured into the waters of Bayou Gauche, having an impromptu business meeting with an extremely large gator. And Armand Broussard made his presence known and called off Sally, also known as Salacious, the 35-foot hooligator. Promptly inviting everyone inside, Armand offered a trade in the form of information for a favor. The group needed simply to help him take down one Victor Black, a high-level businessman for Planetary Solutions, a subsidiary of Pentex. Um, Yeah, worm. Uh, deciding that the terms were amicable to a point, the lot of them set out to the nearby construction site to dispatch said target. Uh, Rahab and Kat charmed their way in to an audience with Mr. Black and learned that his company's plan was to destroy not only this small section of the bayou, but everything down to the gulf. Uh, Armand seeing this as his opportunity when Rahab was reading a business card uh, quite literally jumped for a snack. Uh, there was what can only be realistically called a clusterfuck of events between Truth Faith being cast, a, a lot of gunfire and hissing. And once the smoke cleared, Victor Black was promptly drained by Armand who left 
everyone aside from Cat to disseminate the information that he possessed, not only informing them that several convoys of trucks from the South have been coming in, bringing Sabat, but also the names of a few key players in the city that could be leaking information, along with Ezekiel Thorne, uh, Marquez Moore's last known partner, being name-dropped. And our story resumes, actually, the previous night. Right after Simon closed his shop door and flipped the sign closed. So if you all forgive me for just a slight bit of time travel, things are going to get weird. So Drevian. Going to now, as in yeah, yeah. just now. Oh, yeah, just yeah, now. just now, just just starting out. Just now. Just a little bit. It's like when you watch the movie and at the very end they drop the, the name. I always make the joke, ah, finally, th- the cold open's done. <laughs> what, what comes to mind is um, I got the Lord of the Rings trilogy extended on Amazon. And it wanted to start at the beginning of the second movie. Like, I, I hit play, and it's like, nah, it, it starts with Gandalf and the Balrog falling for the second movie. It's like, thank you, Amazon. This is not what I wanted, right? <laughs> I'm not an expert, but uh, they, they skipped a step. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It seems like a couple thousand steps, but yeah. And then I tried to get back out and try playing it again, and then it went to like half an hour into the third movie for some he was on, what are you doing? Yeah. Eh, if you go to the individual on. movie page, then you go can home, like, play them individually. But... See, my usual yeah. response to that is their best, but I know that's not Amazon. <laughs> yeah. So, in your shop, as you enter, one of your managers comes over to you and sort of holds up a hand. Says... Boss, I don't need you to be alarmed, but we have um, the gentleman who's here has specifically requested you. And um, has threatened violence a few times, and we have thought about calling the cops, but uh, he just points to a offshoot sitting room that is often used for fitting and tailoring. We didn't know what would be best to do, so we stuck him in there. Fair, fair. Um, this is after, like, has Simon, like, turned around and told him that he's not available at this point, or this is just when he first walks in? That was just when you walked in. Okay. So at this point, when Simon's going to, like, turn around and close the door and shoo the others away for the night. And then we'll, like, stand up, like, like flatten down his clothes and walk into the sitting room. Um, in the sitting room is a rather large man. Um, about, you would venture closer on the side of... He's probably close to seven feet. This large barrel chested man who's got a head of twisted dreadlocks roughly to just below his shoulders. He's wearing a uh, torn black band t-shirt for the Ramones and has black torn jeans. Um, Caucasian. Um... And he has a knife that a butterfly knife that he is just sort of flipping through gloved hands. I've literally met this person. <laughs> Same. Pretty, oh, pretty sure I've pretty sure I've seen someone like that before, and I've not seen many people. Um, does Simon recognize this person? Uh give me wits and streetwise difficulties uh da, 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 five. Let's see, what's streetwise diff five? I I hit the wrong buttons on that. No, not difficulty twelve. Oh man. 
sheet. Can you work? There we go. Difficulty five. Two successes at difficulty. Uh, I didn't see that. Also, are you operating? What are you set to? Second sheet that you're using? No, but I think it because I went to roll. I went to roll something on the other sheet and it put that to myself. And I think it did it to this sheet too. Wonderful. Where are we? There is it. Well, what street wise difficulty five? Okay, two successes. Uh, the name does not come to mind, but you have seen this gentleman at Elysium um, the few times you have been, and he has popped up a few times. Um, you're, you're just not grasping his name, but you have seen him, and you know right away he is um, Kindred. And it's further confirmed when he looks up from his knife to you with two blood-red eyes. And the only thing that I know is that he is kindred and that I have seen him at least. Yeah. yeah the, the It's almost like the name is on the tip of your tongue. Mm-hmm. It, it's like I've heard people say his name, but I haven't committed it to memory yep. entirely. And uh, he flashes a fang smile. Hello. He stands at his full height, roughly like six foot eight. So tall beast of a man. Mm-hmm. I hear you're the best in town for high-end fashion and clothing. As you can see, he says, sort of flicking his shirt. I'm a man of taste, so. Well, I like to think that I am. I have no idea if someone would know if anyone's actually, like, more highly rated. (laughs) But, um, we can get some measurements and find something, I'm sure. In the meantime, Simon is on edge, and Simon's going to start putting blood points to boost decks. Just because that lasts for the scene. Okay. Like, it's one plus your max, but Simon can only do one at a time. But, so Simon steps in and... This is a sitting room. Does it actually... So I'm... Simon probably has to step back out to, like, the actual, like, desk to grab, like, a tape measure. Yes. And then it's like, all right, let me grab a notepad and a tape to get this started. Then he'll step out and grab that. Steps back in. He he goes through the uh, the steps with you, letting you you know take measurements and everything. Mm-hmm. You get about halfway through, and you catch. Well, roll me wits and perception, diff six. Wits. You have heightened senses on. Always. <laughs> it's more like Simon can't turn them off. Which is going to be awful when I start using flashbangs. Yep. <laughs> What's... Ah, that's that's a double attribute I need. See, why do you have to be difficult and not let me use a second attribute? Just air raid sirens non-stop. End up in a scene that takes place in a in, at a at a basketball game, and everybody is just like, Bang! "Oh, there's a reason Simon doesn't go to those. There's a reason Simon barely goes to Elysium." Yeah, I can just imagine. Perception. I can just imagine a vampire who has heightened senses and just doesn't know how to like actively doesn't know how to turn them off. So they get in trouble, and the prince just shuts them in a room. With loudspeakers and blares, it's a small world after all. 
all I could think of is the, it's a CIA thing and they're just blar- blaring Barney on repeat. Yep. <laughs> anyway, so you said difficulty six? Yes. All right. So first go down. There we go. Six okay, successes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You, you do this. You do this well. Um, this is one of your things. Uh, but you catch he, his eyes sort of do that glaze over that you're familiar with and he's watching you very closely as you're taking his measurements and uh, he just sort of so uh amaranth huh That's the part that you want to comment about? Not the right? Yeah, see, I'm not too concerned about that. Uh, I am concerned about how uh, our prince might uh, take to one as uh, free with the rules as you appear to be. Considering it's been over a decade, and I have seen the prince many times in the last several nights. Is the prince actually aware of the... You don't know. Okay. Not... I, the only person that Simon would realistically know is the person that told him to do so. In this cat's paw of a plan. So... Yeah, it's like, it's been several years, and the prince and the sheriff have both seen me multiple times. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I see. And uh, so you think you're, do you still think you're safe from the kindred law then? Were any of us ever safe? No, but here's what's going to happen. You're going to give me a name. You're going to give me a clan. And one of two things is going to happen from there. I can either walk out and go straight to a few people I know would rip you from limb to limb without a hesitation, regardless of what the prince has to say, or uh, keep your little secret. You're going to supply me with a whole new wardrobe. And a favor or two. Hmm. Tell me, what clan are you from? He just sort of cracks his knuckles. I think you know exactly where I'm from. Then he just reaches up with one arm, and in a... It is scarred to hell but is a brand of the clan Bruja clan symbol. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are you from here? I've seen you at Elysium, but I don't know if you're just a, you wander or not. Been in and out of the city a few times. <laughs> Simon, having done the measurements, will just refer him to go into the like main hall because there's not exactly clothes rats in the mm-hmm. in a sitting room. And you already know what clan. Then I think we have a arrangement. If you think there's much of an arrangement considering the entire Bruja already hates me. Yeah, but, um, 
You know, <laughs> as uh, as nice as your shop is, somehow you remain to to say a little hidden and off the map. It's because I stay to my shop. I've only been to Elysium a few times. So the In fact, the, the only reason I wasn't at the shop tonight was because Destiny has me out running around the city. Can't exactly say no to the sheriff. I mean, you can if you want your head on the spike. And if, uh, if I know Destiny, he doesn't take too kindly to uh, him and his getting uh, the shaft. So how, how the hell is he uh, letting you walk around without any ramifications? Because it's happened once, years ago, and I stay in my shop. I can't exactly go walking around with, I can't go, I can't, can't exactly walk around a lot with an entire clan, especially one of them um, with higher combat prowess wanting me hurt at the very least. Okay. Fair enough. One more thing to consider. And uh, there will be a flash of movement. And you will see the, the whirlwind of papers and supplies as one of your retainers takes a step from a back room and is just bum rushed by this man. Simon will grab some of the papers out of the air, putting them back on the counter. Reaches under the counter and grabs a stake. Because steaks are very readily available in this store because there's two humans working in a vampire store. And and Simon's not going particularly quickly about this. Like he's he's not being slow. But he's taking enough time to dump more blood points into dexterity to have a have any chance of fighting a Bruja? So, a couple of seconds, paper grabs the mm-hmm. egg, blood point. A couple more seconds, you know, like, walk across the room. Like, not sure how far this big room is. The, it's the main one feet wide. Okay. Yeah, you you've got some distance. But the thing is, I don't, so it would take a couple of like 10, 15 seconds to walk across. Yeah. Okay. So that's what another two blood points in walking across the room. Mm-hmm. Since it's one per turn. And well, a, with this last turn and one last blood point, try to put a stake into. Okay. There are rules. Um, yeah. There are many rules. I've been looking specifically to see how to make this even remotely viable. 
Yes, he's going to get a turn. As, like just staking alone is like difficulty nine and requires three successes to paralyze him. Yeah, it's okay. Well, very mean to do that. Then there's also a question of if he is if he. Bomb rushed my assistant. Is he fa facing away from me? Uh, no. He has no, okay. turned and placed your assistant between him and yourself. Okay. And on your way over, there is fangs out and into the neck. Mm-hmm. Um, so what I'm going to have you do is if you are going to attempt to stake this guy, it's going to be difficulty nine and that will be, I believe it's Dex and Melee. Yes. To do this with. Okay. Yeah. So you can go ahead and roll this. The fortunate thing is he's turned away because um if I'm hitting him from the back, that's a not that's a plus two modify. Yeah. One success. Okay, one success. That does mean you hit. So go ahead and roll strength plus one for damage. Yeah, you get three damage to actually stake a person. Mm -hmm. Okay. Strength plus one. How's your strength looking? That's a one. Ah, so you can't deal enough damage in this one go. No. And I and I spent the blood point to boost. No, it's willpower. Can you spend a willpower and a blood point in the same turn? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So that's a and a willpower. That is deal a damage. Two six and a willpower. So one one can cancel in damage. Yeah. That sucks. Uh, well, as long as you hit, you always do one damage. It should oh, yeah. be said, yeah. and obviously, storyteller decides. Generally, willpower cannot be spent for successes on damage rolls. Okay, mm -hmm. only okay. to hit. As a rule, like that. Obviously, it's completely up to you. But that. No, no, no. That um, that makes sense to me. I should realistically have spent it in the hit then. Yeah. Which would have given you another die. Yeah. But up the auto success. So, not 21 brain. That is not the number you need to roll. Okay. So, you do clip him and it gets in, but it does not go all the way through. And that as you shove it through one of the creating another one of many holes in this shirt blood starts to pour from his chest mm -hmm. which he promptly capri suns your your retainer in response you have to ask if you're going again or you re if you are reevaluating your strategy Do you have to just accumulate three damage over the course of trying to stake this person, or? 
You have to get three in one go. Stake a vampire, the attacker must target the heart, difficulty nine. The attack succeeds and inflicts at least three health levels of damage. The target is immobilized. Okay, so you have to actually get three in one go. Yes. Which, I've seen your dice. You are capable of doing. Yeah. Well, yeah, because I've dumped seven blood points as a dexterity. Yeah, functionally, the problem right now is you're getting through skin, but you are not breaking that rib cage right now. Yeah. But this is a new turn. I could dump a blood point into strength this time. You can. So. These are the uh, benefits of the eighth generation. <laughs> my blood, my attributes grow three at a time. Yeah. You. Simon is not that. <laughs> so we got to eat a few more people to get there. Can Simon try to step behind him, or will he? Or is, if Simon try, tries to step to the side, does he turn? Um, you can attempt to get around him. Um, go ahead and roll me, just for the sake of it. Uh, open this. Dex and athletics difficulty six. Just to see how well you're able to actively maneuver around him, because it is a little cramped athletics. in this part of the room. Uh, Dex athletics difficulty six. If you succeed this, you get a plus two bonus on trying to stake him. So you know there's that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and okay. let me roll his in response. It, it's using Dex. I absolutely can. What the actual? Y- yes, you are behind him. Did he, cool. did he watch himself? Uh, it, it, five one 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 six. <laughs> Are you sure I only get a plus two modifier and like he's not like exposing his heart slightly? Like um, he's not making it real obvious where to stab. Uh, no, because you're at his, you're at his at his back, so you have less uh, sternum to go through. Okay. So are so, you going one more time with that stake? Yep. All right, roll me the... Are you kidding? Mm. Well... Kind of power on that one. Yeah, make that two sexes at least. I will let you retroactively do it. Okay. Uh, so two successes, which means you get a two... Four. Strength, strength plus two. Yeah, strength plus two. Plus the one from the die, or from the... um. Stake. Oh, I get an extra plus one from the stake? Yeah, uh, because the stake damages strength plus one. Yeah, that's what I meant by strength plus two, because strength plus one gets an extra one for the extra success. Okay. So, currently... I I can brain, I swear. Yeah. You can do this. Maybe. You got this. I believe strength you. is you might just impale this man to death with with a with a with a, with a, with a, with a stake before you <laughs> yeah. actually. Okay, so oh, that's that's a two success. Yeah, really. You might you might just stab this man to death with a stake before you actually stake him, but you know, if he's dead. So there is a whirlwind of movement as you fake to the left and then dodge around him to the right to get behind him and promptly plant that stake. Uh, Almost as if he's expecting it, there is a slight tap of his foot to lift him off the ground a bit. Almost as if he's... He's done this song and dance before. Uh, Moving his heart out of the way. There is a thud as your retainer drops to the ground. You didn't think you were going to win that easy, did you? Never. And he will he will turn and swipe and as he does his Nails extend into claws. And 
uh, one success. How bad does this hurt? Where is my health? There is my health. How does one get access to extra bruised? I'm very curious. Is there um, any player can pull that off? Merits, huge merits. size. Okay. Merits and size. Yeah, mer- the they well no the huge size merit. Mm-hmm. Also, be turned into a shotska mm-hmm. or other monsters. Get flesh crafted. Okay. Yep. <laughs> but mom, I don't want two extra arms. I don't want to be joined with eight other people into one being. Hey, we do not talk about the Blood Brothers here. I'm talking about Schlatzka. Fair. Fair. Sorry, there are some topics in the vampire world we don't like to discuss. Absolutely. Uh, So that'll be too lethal. Lethal. Okay. And now it is back to you. He has backed up a couple of steps, sort of doing a hop skip over the body of your retainer. He just sort of holds up his hands, almost in a Morpheus style of, come on. (laughs) Another point into, into strength. You will run out of blood, boy. Notably, at, this, at this point, it's either he runs out of blood and frenzies, or he dies to the Bruja. Notably, you can boost your stats beyond the normal limit. It's just that any extras beyond go away after three after turns. After three turns. When you, when, you, when you stop feeding it blood. Yeah. yeah. From the point that you stop feeding it. Simon's at dexterity 10 already. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I've been dumping blood this and? entire time. That's the max. You cannot. You have. You have three turns <laughs> once you stop ben- spending the blood points on it. Hence, why I switched to dumping into strength. Fair. Yeah. Once you stop pouring blood, you have three turns before anything above one over your generational yep. attribute max yeah. goes yep. away. All right. Um. So um, I just. Stabs it and tries to stay him again. So how's your blood pool doing? I have three left. Oh, I don't think this retainer is making it out no matter who wins. <laughs> oh, no. The Brewhaw's already brought up Amaranth. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, you're not rolling like you have 10 decks, I should say. That's because I have, like, no brawl. I have, like, one brawl. Yeah, but you, you're, you're actually only rolling six dice. Did I not set that high enough? Where? Come here. I did it. I didn't change it from the three earlier. Oh, that's a that makes a big difference. I should have been rolling four more dice two of those times. No. Well, here's your uh, last turn for this for for all that extra dex. Yep. So go ahead and roll it. Stake dex melee. What? <laughs> oh my <The> word. God. <laughs> Storyteller system, folks. Sometimes it just sucks. Yeah. So that's uh, 11 dice. Oh, I, my. Yeah. Zero I, successes. Gone. I'm curious because I would have had two more attacks with another four dice. That would have no, been that a. That wouldn't, that wouldn't have done it. That wouldn't have done it either because mm-hmm. that's a net zero. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. So you step in. Give mine's a pain in the ass. Like, <laughs> yeah. You step in, you take that stake, and you're confident as all get out. And you just go straight for the heart. And he just very quickly does the anime lean. <laughs> Although. Technically, I do have one more shot at Dex already. Yeah, because three there. turns after yeah. you stop. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He just has to survive this. Yeah. If I can, which I'll spend another willpower, so I'm going to hit at with a strength of four then. On the next one? Yeah. Yes. All right. Ooh. 
Okay, that's that's Simon just has to actually survive this. My NPCs are not rolling well. Um one lethal damage on six dice. Love it. <laughs> so he does the anime lean and he he overconfident reaches those claws straight towards your chest and you take a step back but get scraped as they come up. To be fair, is he used to fighting somebody with dex 10 either? No, no. Okay. I guess that means Simon gets another attack. Yep. Hopefully this will be the, this will be the one. I feel it. This will be it. Strength 4. Uh you have to pour your blood in one at a time, and it's just a battle of suspending yourself until you yeah. get to the point. Uh, yeah. So, take dexterity and melee. Difficulty nine. Hey. <laughs> All right, you get the extra an extra four die, extra three. Oh yeah, I was one for the stake, but yeah, so four total bonus on top of your strength. Uh, did you yeah. spend a willpower on that as well? Oh, right. I didn't declare yeah. such. But I, I mean, you said, you said it last turn that you were going yeah. to spend a willpower. Yeah. So, sure. I... Sure, I'll, I'll burn the willpower. That's fine. So that's oh. five. Five, five successes. Plus five. Yep, yeah. strength plus five. So, nine. Yep, nine damage dice. Come on, you can do this. You got this. What? <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Wow. This is <laughs> fucking amazing. Wow. This is not inspiring confidence in my future dice rolls for this game. Oh I'm boy, ladies and gentlemen, nine nine uh that would have done it if not yeah. for the ones. If yeah. not for the ones. Wait, um, wait, wait. Wait, what? I think at least for at revised. Botches didn't take away for on un- un- damage. Hang on, let me check. Combat damage. We discussed last session that they do. Oh yeah, this turn because... they do in in D twenty. Um, because it is written as you cannot botch damage rolls, but as long as you hit, you always do one damage. Let's see. You do a damage. Oh, yep. Nope. You are correct. Moreover, damage effect rolls cannot botch. Bot roll simply means the attack glances harmlessly off. Okay. So fair yeah. enough. Ah, uh, nine dice, zero successes. That hurts. That's legitimately something that I wish they hadn't changed from revised. Yeah. yeah they 100%. took that out. They took that out from revised. Botches didn't count against successes on damage. Uh. Things like this wouldn't happen. On the flip side, the problem with that, werewolf. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Werewolf fights were very, very short. <laughs> I I can imagine when everybody's throwing around, you know, ten dice of aggravated damage every round. Yep. I apologize. Apparently, even though we have severe thunderworm storms, the, the thunderstorm ones, storm warnings, my, my uh, neighbors have decided to mow. I hope that's not being heard by our... No, nah, I don't can't hear it. it. Thunderworm Stornings, I love that. Thunderworm I, I, I love Thunder Warm Stornings in general. That is 100% an accurate way to describe right now in general. I mean, yes. Thunderworm. I, I, would, I, would, I would call any time it rains right now in Georgia Thunderworm. Yeah. Uh, okay. The rain so, does nothing. Yeah. Into the swamp. You bite. Uh, you definitely feel that stake go in, and you get that small glimmer of hope that yes, this is it. Until you hit bone. <laughs> and then your dexterity drops from ten to six. Yep. Yeah, the barrage just flexes and it stops there in the muscle. Damn bone. Well, one of two things is going to happen. Either you're going to somehow figure this out or you're going to die. We, we will find out. 
we, no, I'm pretty we, sure at this point it's just Simon yeah. dies. I feel like running away is always an option, right? Maybe. Simon's not. I running. don't know a lot about vampires. The vampire you game could as a whole, you? but I don't think you run away from a bruja once you've started something. I mean, you can. You I have tried. Have, I certainly have done it before with characters. I, unfortunately, I think Simon is missing the celerity required to pull that off. That is a problem. Yeah. So, also, I would have to flee the entire city because I already mentioned Amaranth. If he survives, he can just go to the sheriff, who also doesn't like Simon. Say that Simon tried to diablerize him and potentially just launch a blood hunt onto Simon. Man. So there is... Mm-hmm. <laughs> you don't know if you caught him off guard or you messed up his balance, but he swings wide with his claws. Does he rolled no successes on six? He rolled no successes. This fight's going amazingly. This, fight is this is a hell of errors. This, this is, is great. A hell of a fight. So here's the thing: you still have six dexterity. And if yes. you keep pumping your strength up, eventually you'll have the damage total no matter what if you get one success. Yeah. That is that is accurate. It's just whether you frenzy first. Well, if you frenzy, who knows what happens? Oh, I know what happens. That retainer is not, <laughs> not surviving. <laughs> <laughs> so it is your turn. What does Simon want to do? You still have a stake partially in a dude. Yeah. Well, I I got to sidetrack because like Simon Frenzies kills the mortal. That's gonna trigger a path. Because the sin is killing a mortal for any other reason than in fulfilling its destiny. Ooh. Yeah. So um So what are you going to do? The stakes there. Simon's going to slam in. Going to put another blood point into strength and then slam into the slam into the stake. Okay, trying the, the brute force uh, option. Okay, works for me. Go ahead and roll your attack. You still have six decks. You have seven times on this. Let's see. Dex, I'm on. Light. Oh, there you go. Hey. Actually, it's it's already targeted. Do I even need? Is it Dex nine? If it because I'm not targeting his heart now, I'm hitting the stake, which is an I easy. Think, I think it's still constantly Dex nine. Ah, Dex nine. Makes okay, sense. I mean two. Just because it's hard strike, regardless. Okay. But you you still have your strength plus two. Just a minute. I was asked where ice cream was. Mm-hmm. And we have like four freezers that I could have gone in. Okay, so. Strength plus two. And your strength is up at five now, I think. Yes. So seven dice on this one. Come on. There we go. Here we go. So through the war of attrition... Mm-hmm. You you step back as he whiffs wide, and you just rear back and slam all you have into that stake, and there is a resounding crack of bone and a squish as it goes straight into the heart, and there is a gout of blood that pours out from the hole, covering you, your clothes, your hand, and part of the floor. But there is a moment of a small smirk on his face and then rigidity as he just goes limp. As he freezes up, Simon steps into it and fangs into his throat. Oh dear. And starts draining. I have to ask the question, are you going for the full diablery? He is dying. He, yes, he is complete empty. Okay. Okie dokie. He's done it once already. Yeah. 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 He's already the outlarized one, bro. What's another? What's another soul to fight for to fight for supremacy? 
Yeah. I mean, he doesn't exactly have... Can't resist if he's paralyzed. Exactly. Simon, I have to ask, what generation are you currently? Simon is 11th generation. Congratulations, you have made it to generation 9. <laughs> do you take do you take the the, the victims oh. generation or do you just gain a generation? You take the victims generation. Nice. Well, let me let me double check. I have I'm a pretty uh, sure. Usually one unless it is a significant difference. And then it can be like two, three. Well, it's it's by one. You're you're okay. Yeah, you're you're tenth gen now. I'm a tenth generation vampire. Mm. You also have uh, that diablery is now very strengthened in your aura. Black lines grow. Against whatever the bright color happens to be, because I don't have the color chart memorized. I need a conscience roll from you. I believe it might be conviction for you because you're not following humanity. Uh, also, the color chart is on page 136. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I clear, just to clarify, I'm assuming that this is a big no no. Oh, absolutely. This is one of the biggest no-nos. Hmm. Yeah, draining draining another vampire is, at least among the Camarilla, one of those things that gets you executed. Can. As evidenced by the fact that mistake. Simon hasn't been executed already. Yeah. Like there are you can if you can finagle the right political position, you can get away with it. But for the most part, Diablery is a is an executable offense. Um, I just need to figure out how to roll the. Let's see, it's probably. Oh no, there it is. Confection. That's not grabbing. Oh no, that's probably difficulty. difficulty. Are you sure I can't use? Are you sure I can't use self control? No. Dang it. Two successes. Okay, you do not slide down on your uh, path roll. Trying to see. Why would I slide down on my path? It's killing a mortal. That's the sin. Unless I checked, kindred aren't mortals. No. So. Uh. Eh. That's. Yeah. I mean, I clearly to... should just show this one mortality. Mm-hmm. Talk to a salubri and they'll uh. I have a lot to say about that. If you can find one. <laughs> so, um, it's about this time your second retainer comes from the back room. And I forget how exactly he just turns to ash, doesn't he? There's not an actual body. Now, if he does turn, get turned to ash, he's getting pulled into the cor- courtyard with a stake in him. And I believe the Diablery also... I, I, I'm not 100% on this, but I believe Diablery leaves an ash pile just like sunlight does. Well, that's what we're going with. So as that last bit of his essence is drawn in through you. There is almost a satisfying the sound of autumn leaves being crushed slowly in your hands. And the sound of the stake clattering to the floor as he just slowly ashes into a small whirlwind and lands in a neat pile on the ground. I feel like an important question is how much blood was. <laughs> oh, um, 
What's your max? Now I'm not sure. Considering the generation change. 10 max, I think, is 12 or 13. Hold on. No, it's... The answer is you're at full because he was full. Okay. So it's just a question of what is full. Yes. And that is for you. Yeah. So your second manager is just sort of like, okay, that's a thing. That is a thing that, ha- why are you covered? What, what the hell happened? Uh, at 10th generation, your blood pool max has gone up to 13. Yep. What happened was, um, you know how the customer was already threatening violence? Yeah. Those threats did not stay threats. Okay, then. Good to know. As Simon shakes off the, like, dust off the ash, and... Well, he attacked whatever the other retainer's name is that's on the floor. Do I need to call an ambulance or what? Simon Simon goes to check on. They are breathing. Okay. It is just shallow. Do, do, do Do I call an ambulance? What's the protocol here? Well... Where are things that other things that we don't have blood? Is healing a mortal one of those? Or does that just make them ghouls later? I think the first time is not ghouls. No, it's like, like three. Yeah. That's blood bond. No, that is blood bonding. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah. If a if a if a mortal partakes of, of Vitae, they become a ghoul. Yep. That's on you whether you want a ghoul. No, they will stop. Once they once they are a ghoul, they can heal themselves with that Vita. Yeah. And once they stop if you don't feed them the next month, they stop being a ghoul. Is it a month after they're out of Vita or a month after they've been fed? You have to be fed you have to get blood once a month. Um I don't know. What happens when they stop being a ghoul? Uh, so it depends. If if you're a ghoul for a month, not much. Nothing. If you're a ghoul for like seventy five years, all of that catches up to you. Yeah, yeah. It's the like, age will catch up with you. There are ghouls whose masters have died, and they've just legitimately turned to dust a month later without knowing what's going on. Ah. Uh. Well, fortunately, Simon is not particularly interested in having a ghoul, especially considering this is already a retainer. Your your so the other one has pulled out a cell phone and has nine one one dialed and is just sort of like vibrating and staring at you. Simon will um like stand back up, like wave the other one to put away their phone, grabs a pair of fabric shears, and like slices his hand open and gives the one on the floor two blood points. Okay, congratulations! You have created a ghoul. And one step bound them. Yes. And what? Blood bond is a is a okay. three step process. Even at the first drink, there are emotional effects. Yeah. So the rest of your night is just sort of getting them okay with understanding because after about a half hour they come to and you only have about an hour and a half till sunrise so you sort of walk them through exactly what's happened let them understand the emotional trauma (laughs) and take your rest simon before probably shortly before sunrise we'll call destiny and play it as defensive that Simon may or may not have had like frenzied and drained the bruja that attacked him. Like, 
he's not he's not going to try to hide it because like oh cool he walks into Elysium again and like the prince or the the venture second in charge whatever <laughs> his name or rank is called the seneschal yes yeah the seneschal or like destiny if any of them like look at his aura and like there's more diablery there than there was before like he he's not going to try to hide this from the the people in charge and try to downplay it as much as possible first with so little the, time that they can't attack that they can't really do much until the next night destiny's advice is to stay out of elysium or at least stay away from gilyom for a couple nights uh other than that he's not exactly happy with what you've told him but the sun is rising in like 5 minutes and he's not going to he's not about that yeah. Like Simon particularly times it to where no none of the kindred can do much until the next night. So uh night falls. The next or day day happens and night falls. You regain regain a willpower, lose a blood point, and then a couple hours after sunset. We resume back with the rest of our group as they have just dropped off Armand in his uh, molded cypress shack with his gator Sally. And I assume the four of you are headed back towards the mainland. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Yes. A very angry discussion brewing amongst all of you. Um. So in the time that since that 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 cat was by away from her, when they come, she is she is calm, she is collected, she is focused on mission and not screaming at anybody or throwing fireballs in their faces. Some figuring out how to do that. That's for later. Now they have a job. <laughs> So we have our intel. We know who to worry about. Um, the Bruja by the name of Nero. Currently a uh, former member of Destiny's Guard, formerly an Anarch. Um, one of the primogen. Well, one of, yes, two potentials, but one of specifically the Malkavian and Elena. And Ezekiel Throne, who is Marquez's last known partner. Thorn. Huh? Ezekiel Thorn. Thorn, yes. What'd I say? Probably. Just switch the R and the O. Yeah, one or the other. Um, Thorn, yes. Uh, we have four to, th- uh, four to five convoys that have been seen uh, going in specific routes, not just the ones that we've found. And it has been several over the past few weeks. What do we do from here? What time of night is it? Uh, The whole sunset happened just after 7, so you're looking at close to 10, 10.30 by the time you guys have made it back to to actual physical land away from uh, Bayou Gauche. So who do we think we should follow up with next? We want to go after that convoy. We want to go after. I am not more witnesses. I'm not entirely pleased with the idea of us attacking a convoy full of sabbat. 
Well, neither am I, but I'm just trying to, we have all this information, which way do we want to go? Of the targets that we've had laid out for us, the one that isn't either a convoy of Sabat or a Primogen is Mr. Thorne. And Nero. And Nero. Nero is easily enough solved. We inform destiny. Either one of two things will happen. Either destiny is, well, well, I think the same thing will happen no matter what the situation is. Either destiny will handle the Nero problem because they are so incensed about the idea that Nero could be involved or destiny is in on this whole thing and they will realize that Nero has been named and will take care of them anyways to protect themselves. So that one is easily solved. Mr. Thorne is a little bit more. And it's worth saying, like, I'm assuming that, 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 uh, um, uh, can't, the outfit she's wearing is just completely a mess. She has scraped as much of the mud off as possible, cleaned it as well as she could without it, without being able to actually scrub her or actually clean, but to gain some modicum of dignity at <laughs> this. Ezekiel is definitely a good option for us to handle. The primogen are obviously a concern because we shouldn't be trying to take down primogen without better information. Yeah, I'm, I'm not too crazy about going after the primogen myself or the Sabbat. So that leaves Ezekiel. Why have been in town longer than most of the current primogen? Uh, a number of them, yes. Um, my age and experience matches a number of the current primogen in terms of overall time in the city. That said, a primogen, no matter what, is not a light target as they have the might of the clan behind them. And the greater concern here is one of them is the prince's clan. This is true. And that there are any number of ways that that could go. There's only so much investigating we can do on that, which is honestly what we should do for either of the primogen. Investigate them, find out who is, see if we can get any evidence. But if it's Elena, she will be... If we inform the prince... The prince will either protect her or will immediately flip out and destroy her no matter what. No, informing the prince is a good way to either get into a fight with the prince or have a blood hunt called on Elaine. There's especially, no other way. Yes, especially considering what we saw about the last bit of information she got. I don't think a blood fight is what we need right now. Or a blood hunt, excuse me. See you then. So I would drive you another. It's to be fair, it could go horribly wrong. Drove's the target with blood hunts. That, you know, it's not outside the realm of possibility. Um, so we're going in here. By the side of the road, should we go somewhere? <laughs> yes, back to the city. That's. I think you've had enough of the swamp, have you, Cat? No, it's where our answers will be. Unless we want to go start hijacking convoys full of shovel heads. Not necessarily. I mean, right. in complete fairness, 
if that was the route we would want to go, do have somebody who could probably keep them all at bay? Shooting a sidelong glance at, at, at Rehab. I was thinking you just wait by the road and you have a 30 foot crocodilian there. Just open up the door and you could do that thing you do. But no, that's probably not the best of ideas. She will she will shoot shoot you a dirty look, make no other response. Fair. That is entirely fair. I don't think we're looking for that kind of excitement just yet. I would argue we weren't looking for that kind of excitement at first, but we got it anyways. I'm not trying to start a fight. Thankfully, neither is Rahab, and she continues to give you the dirty look <laughs> and say nothing. I mean, I know how ironic it is for the person who drove a convoy truck, U Haul truck, into the Gulf of Mexico to say it's not the right time for it. But yeah, maybe we don't need that kind of excitement right now. No, probably not. So we should go try to find information about uh, 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 Mr. Thorne or the Primogens. Question. Beyond Cat, do the other two vampires here have any idea what happened in that hut? Uh, I know that, so for, as far as I'm operating, Guire knows that something happened that made uh, that made Cat freak out and fire a gun, which is what led to the guards coming in. Yeah, and thus led to Guire having to dispose of the guards. In fairness, I don't think Cat knows exactly what happened. Cat no. just knows that Rehab did something. Yeah, like and... Guire just knows that Rehab did something that freaked Cat out and caused Cat to shoot a gun. Yeah, uh, Mer- Cat- uh, yeah. Mercy knows there's one hell of a shit show that happened, and she had to. Just stood by and watched the dominoes fall without knowing what set it off. Smartest decision in the room. Mercy. Yeah, what's to what to me? Why? I don't know. Mercy, your cell phone yes. goes off. I, I just want to I want to say for the record because I haven't gotten to say this that my cell phone ringtone is like that old like horror movie like pipe organ the da, 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 da. Yes. <laughs> so uh box Cicada and Fugue in D minor Cicada and Fugue in D minor yeah that thank you <laughs> music people okay I answer it uh Mercy Ransom yes Tony hey sweetheart I got a I got a bit of an update for y'all. Mm-hmm. How did, uh, first I have to ask, how did the uh, meeting with Armand go? Uh, it it went. There were gators involved, but it went and we're, we're good. Oh, fuck. I forgot to tell you about Sally. That's okay. We've met. We've made our peace. Everyone yes. still has all their limbs. Yeah, at the moment that could change at any that could change at any time. Oh well, that's all I care about. Uh, so I got a bit of news. Uh, I don't know exactly how to work this thing, but Agony left me with the receivers for. He left me with an iPad. Ah. With some mumbo jumbo hooked up to the internet. We got a hit on the security cameras. Got a hit on the security cameras. Okay, where should we meet you? Um, what's your location? Um, he lists off the address for a warehouse not too many blocks away from the original site that you guys found the U-Hulls. Okay. Um, that is, you are you are more than welcome to meet me if you do not have any other leads in which to follow. All right. Well, I figure we'll wander in that direction. We've got a minute. Let me confer with my associates. We'll let you know. 
Okay. Uh, somebody needs to check in on Simon. Will do. All right. And there is a click, and he is gone. Mm. All right. So uh, she relay relays information. Desi doesn't know how to work an iPad. Uh, but he's got a hit on the security cameras that Agony set up. Uh, and also he says someone needs to uh, check on Simon. Anybody want to make that phone call? Anybody? I'll take it if no one. I mentioned him, so uh, somebody that's not me. Okay, so that's such uh, a rousing endorsement. Against. <laughs> Mercy no one wants to talk to Simon. I guess. Mercy picks up the phone. Scrolls through her contacts. <laughs> says, Ed, call Simon. Well, Simon, your phone begins to ring. Except it doesn't ring, it just buzzes. Because Simon does not have a ringtone, because why would Simon want the loud noise? So Simon picks it up after a moment. Hello. Hi, Simon, it's Mercy. Um, uh, We've got some new information. Uh. Destiny said we should check on you. Everything, everything all right? Well, considering you're calling at this point in the night, everything seems to be okay so far. Right. That didn't really answer my question, but I'll leave you to it. Um, so we got to, you want these, uh, you want to, Meet uh you wanna meet us where um Destiny is gonna give us the hit off the security cameras. Sure. All right, I'll send you the I'll send you the location. All right. How far like how long before you guys should get there? So uh, it's it could be an hour or so drive for you. Okay. All right. All right, then. Oh, well, see, see you about an hour. All right. All right. <clears throat> he hangs up the phone. Excellent. Uh, he said everything's okay for this time of night. I really didn't push on what that meant, but I figure we'll find out sooner or later. Um... So we've got a bit of a drive. Anybody want to ride in the hearse? Damn, the body prop's not there to ride in the back of the hearse. No. I'll be taking my vehicle since I brought it along. I have a cat. Anybody need a ride? I've also got my uh, scooter. Oh, your scooter. Okay, it's a bit of a drive your scooter can make it yes okay uh, that, that's cool i do not have a vehicle i will happily ride with you all right you want to you know be in the front or you want to be you want to lay down in, in the, the back? front please <laughs> i am a completely mobile corpse i do not belong in the back all I could think of when Mercy called and was like, is everything all right? No, my heart's not beating. <laughs> the alternative is, oh, good, I could really use a hearse. Mer Mercy. Mercy knows that something in right, but it's like, you know, maybe we just don't need to talk on the phone about it. Maybe that's an in-person Oh, no. <laughs> Even a person, it's going to be a, it's going to be a conversation of you need to ask very specific questions. Right. Or use all specs. I can, can see orbs. I can do that. Yeah. I have the spirits touch. I can do that. This is gonna go great. I'm so excited. <laughs> so you all attend to your different vehicles and make your way into town. As Guire sort of hops onto her motorcycle, she fishes into into the neckline of her outfit and pulls out that small silver pendant and just offers a kiss to the surface of it and puts it back before she takes off. Guire, mm -hmm. when you do that, 
for the first time in a long time, um, there is a warmth that hits back. She pauses for a second. And in a in a moment of just nostalgia, she opens the she opens the pendant. And automatically there is an MP3 that immediately plays somewhat grainy audio, but just to anyone listening can hear. I love you, but you don't need me anymore. Get out there and raise hell, darling. She just closes her eyes for a second, closes the pendant, puts it away. There's the motorcycles. So you all make your way into town. For the two that can have a conversation, is there any conversation that happens? Or is this just sort of awkward ride back to New Orleans. I think Can is being pretty quiet on her own. She is taking time in there to, as much as while not being like horribly like like trying to be casual about, it, but trying to clean up as much as possible. Well, I can imagine the passenger windows down. There's just like slumps of mud occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> now throwing out the window. I mean, probably. Uh, you know, you know, Cat. I think I got a, I think I got a squeegee in that glove compartment there. If you really need something oh, to get wonderful. that mud off, <laughs> <laughs> squeegeeing off the sleep jacket. There also might be a lint roller in here somewhere. I really don't know. Stuff you finds think, its way. Is, is this place that we are going to? Is it? Would you mind briefly stopping by my house on the way? Oh, yeah, sure. Wonderful. It'll make you feel better. Go right ahead. It w- it would. I can tell. That means that she only has to worry about, like, getting all the shit out of her hair. Like, everything else can, everything else is fine and can deal. Like, uh, so going back to your house, yep. Uh, you unlock the door, you go inside, and sitting on your kitchen table is another small bouquet of black roses. There's a certain sanctity. Never mind. Why would I expect her to respect that more than anything else? I will go up, see if there is a note. No. Okay. It is is just black roses and small glass vase. I will take the vase, roses, the whole thing. I will take it outside. Uh, Not having changed it. Open up the door to the hearse, put it inside. We'll need to be depositing this somewhere on our way. It's fine. I'm just going to be throwing it out the window somewhere. Shut the door. Go back. I'm not letting somebody put no fucking spy device in my home. (laughs) So you put it on my hearse. Great. (laughs) Sorry, that was an out of character. (laughs) I think it would the not be part disclosing is... Giovanni clan 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 methods, but so you you quickly Oops, change, change. Into, I assume a not too dissimilar outfit from what you were previously yep. wearing. Yep, she will she will she will take all the all, all the crap off. Do just a really super quick. Look, we're undead people. It doesn't matter. Scrubbing through the hair to get like the worst of it out. So at least looks good. It doesn't have to be good. 
Because let's be honest, she is going to be shaving her head tonight. So she wakes up in the morning, the hair is back to normal, and it's fine. Um, advantages of being a vampire, and just... put some put some put put some decent clothes on, and then head and head back. I just have to say, and this is just more of my needling cat. Just like I just picture, like you know, she has the business suit on, and like she just takes out the business suit, and there's another one underneath it. Just like, <laughs> like how you grab a paper towel out of the dispenser, and then right, right, one. yeah. It's the 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 breakaway suit that breaks away to another suit, to another the, suit, the exactly. Breakaway suit. Yeah, gets the in Superman transformation I've ever seen, but okay. Puts the vase on her lap. Is like, all right, let's go. And then at some point, like at least several blocks away, just feel as casually window down. open down the window. Tonk. <laughs> Glass shatters. Yep. You Steve Austin something? theme music. Mm, that was not a gift given in... Benevolence, shall we say? Ah, gotcha. Okay. So, as I say, is Guire or uh, Simon the first one to show up? Simon would have like said in about an hour. So Simon's like an hour and five minutes. So Guire probably would have been the the first one to show. Followed not too far behind by Rahab. Destiny is there. Um, Throttling Simon. <laughs> he In is, his mind. Um, he is not wearing a shirt or a jacket. And he is covered in mud and scratches. Does he look like he's injured or just? You have done a number of patchings on Destiny and uh, you don't know. (laughs) He could be injured or this just could be the regular, though. On close, once you get a little closer, the wounds are fresh. I'm just having a bit of a scrap, Sheriff. He lights a cigarette. Just a little bit. Um, Shoot away what I assume is a couple of Anarchs out towards the uh, northern border of the city. Would you like the good info, the bad info, the dangerous info, or the enraging info first? You're not leaving me with many good options there, darling. What's a good info option? I don't know which one that is. I think pretty good info. But he offered some good info. Let's let's go worst to best, I suppose. Uh, well, the enraging info for you personally uh, would be that one of our potential suspects would be a fellow by the name of Nero. The cigarette breaks in his fingers. Go on. And I will recount the information that we have on Nero from Armand. I feel like at this, this is about the point when Simon walks up. Yeah. When, when Destiny is at the angriest. Okay, so you mean to tell me one of my own is potentially funneling out info to the Sabbat? No, that checks out. If a monster to be believed, then, well, he's a solid source of information. I've been doing this a number of years, and uh, Armand has not steered me wrong. The dangerous information... A number of primogens are also on that list, including for Elaine. Uh, Elena. 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 Including Elena. 
Mm, the Crimson Mask. All right. Um, fuck. Uh, well, who are the other suspects then? I'll list the rest of the primogens. So that would be Kellerman and Elena. Hmm. Yep. Bad news. We've got lines on more convoys uh, that have been uh, spotted in, and she'll give the information on the convoys that have been found. And then lastly, the good news, we've got a line on uh, the, how was the name of the original, of the, the guy? Not Thorne, but his, the one he was related to when he uh, was... Marquez. Uh, we got a line on Marquez Moore's last known accomplice, Mr. Thorne. Accomplice is definitely a word. Hmm. Yeah. There you go. So, you're thinking that a scorned lover found out a little bit of secret from Alexander and funneled it out to him? Possibly. Or hell, I don't know. They may still be together. For all we know. But the I, I list that in that particular order because obviously the enraging news for you personally. The dangerous news, I don't know how the prince will react if she finds out that Elena is on our potential list of traitors. They are, um, to put it, to call them close would be a little bit of an understatement. Yeah, so either if we come in with not enough obvious, with not enough solid proof, we end up just pissing off the prince. If we come in with enough proof to show it to her, that will lead to a blood with, I feel, no denial. I would like to say y'all stepped in it, but uh, it's not you. No, we're just finding out. I'm covering the tracks. I would like to go one year. Well, just, just one fucking year. Or six months. Fuck. Uh, six months will be fine. Of none of the backstabbing bullshit. Yeah. Let me get out of the White Tower. That's all I gotta say. Anyway. So, we got a couple primogen. Nero, Ezekiel Thorne, and there's and some convoys. Now, when you say some, the number that he said, four I forget to five. how many that was. Four to five convoys. A lethal <laughs> amount of sabbat. And it's at this point, the two of you show up. Yeah. Yes. Okay, uh, so we're looking at Potentially almost double, doubling the, the lick population in town. Mm-hmm. Fuck me. Okay. The Sabbat certainly don't do anything by halves. No, they do not. And this won't, this may not even be the interesting part here, is even if they do not succeed in whatever attempt they're going to do to to assassinate members of the inner council the presence of that many sabot in the city yeah. is going to result in a lot more violence done that breaks masquerade that's just... going yes just like a um... I'm a little behind the times. The Sabbat? Oh, the vampires you get God. told about in horror stories. Simon proceeds to empo dump on the Sabbat. So in about 45 minutes when that's over. Yes. Um, 
the gist of it for the player, the Sabat bad. Yes, I mean, they're the vampires that give zero shits about human life or the or even attempting to keep up yeah. any kind of masquerade. Humans are they afraid are, to be hunted yeah. for sport. We are monsters. Why are why are we not acting like monsters? This is our nature. Let's do it. Also, also the, humanity. Also, the tidbit in I, Montreal by night, uh, where they legitimately play football with football, humans. football, yeah. so yeah. not football. It's a thing. Also, like, the, the, I think it's the funny part. And like, like, like we're monsters. Why don't we act like monsters? And, and then Katie had said something about humanity when Simon said, said there with I said no zero. I said zero humanity. Okay. Zero. Yeah, you're saying this as Simon, who does not pretend to be human with zero humanity. Fair. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, it still didn't make what I said wrong. Oh. Wow. <laughs> just because anyway. you're shooting right there. But they start breaking masquerade. That attracts the attention of hunters who may notice certain powerful individuals who have just moved into the city and track where they go. Worst case scenario, even if they don't succeed, they put the inner your inner circle in the eyes of the organized hunters. Uh, so, question for the storyteller: uh, In this setting, are we going with hunters being the imbued or the organizations? And two organizations. Okay. And two, how many of those have Guire occasionally had to hide and or kill? Uh, you've dealt with a number of the Malleus Maleficarum, okay. and uh, of course it's some. Quite a few in this area. Um, you probably would have dealt with a little bit, potentially of Network Zero. Mm-hmm. Um, and then aside from them, the Knights of Saint Adrian. Mm-hmm. So over the the. 200 years you've been in town, you've probably dealt with a handful. Mm-hmm. The hilarious thought that came to mind is one of Simon's retainers is actually a member of the union. <laughs> it's not, like Simon, just like, yeah, I'm working with you. So you clearly don't hunt me. Here's some information on like Sabat and Anna works for the hunters. Uh, but yeah, the, uh, this is all bad. There is no good in this situation. All of run into a few of the Malleus, the Knights, the a few of the different hunting breeds, but I don't want to see them acting in force. No, nobody should. They are hunters. Before I get a little too sidetracked and uh, enraged, uh, he will reach into a... The first time you are noticing a, like, camo... It's it's a flak, um, flak backpack. Mm-hmm. And pulls out a an iPad and hands it to Cat. Okay. What While you're that? checking that out, I'm going to step over to Destiny. Shall I take a look at this? She says, uh, indicating the scratches. They're mostly superficial, but if you want to go ahead, he'll just sort of hold his arms out. And you can hold uh, intelligence and medicine. Yep. Difficulty six. Oh, zero successes. That went poorly. So. It, it it mainly translates to he he was right. Uh, you go to do some things, and you it's mainly you get all of your supplies out. You start doing an assessment. And you realize, yeah, most of these are superficial. He's just basically scraped up. He'll be fine. 
you spray on some anesthetic and you you call it a day. All I can imagine is no, you're covered not in mud and mm. what was that, Austin? I said I know you're not going to get an infection, but you could at least try to clean these off. He just sort of shrugs. Oh, uh, he leans over and types in for a few seconds a long ass number code and then unlocks the iPad. Does he does this where Simon can see? Yes. Can Simon track what the code is? Uh, give me um there's a role for this because of the merit. I just I just don't remember what that role is. Give me a I'll just do wits and uh or pers- hold on, what is it? <laughs> Perception and alertness, alertness difficulty six. Um, and then after that, and then because aspects minus two, I have successes. So you are able to track that and keep that code to memory. Okay. And Destiny opens it. Cat, you take. You don't even need to make rolls. Uh, this is very simple. Mm-hmm. There's like four apps on this. Okay. And you open it to the security camera feed. Oh, dear. Okay. And click the most recent saved video. And that is where we are going to take our break for the night. Cool. So we will be back okay. in a few moments. Okay. All righty. Hmm.
And we're back. All right. Welcome back, everyone. So when we left off, uh, Kat had just hit play on a surveillance video that was on Agony's <laughs> iPad that was left to Destiny. Yep. There is probably a good five minutes of absolutely nothing. And then from the left of the shot, enter in roughly 12 individuals. Okay. 10 fairly nondescript vampires in different um, arrays of clothing, all covered in, some of them covered in blood. But the two at the front are the two that draw your attention immediately. One man, roughly five foot ten, shoulder length blonde hair with a number of tattoos on his face. He's wearing a pair of black dress pants with a white button up and a red tie loosely tied around his neck. The individual standing next to him is roughly four foot even in a black sundress with black curly hair. And the 12 of them enter. This unfortunately is not one of the upgraded CCTV cameras that has audio. So there is a bit of dead air. Okay. Do, and these, then... do these look like who I saw in Alex's vision no okay so these are not not okay um after a few moments we would like to mention that both of the u-hauls were still outside at this point the ones that you had left there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um there is a moment and then suddenly the giant garage door starts bubbling out in different spots. It does not break. There's another few moments of, of dead air. And then out walks the blonde gentleman, completely pristine, and the little girl covered head to toe in blood. He looks fairly serene. She looks beyond pissed. Okay. He says a few things to her. She begins... In, it's, if it weren't for the blood, it would kind of be adorable. As she begins throwing a tantrum. To which he simply digs in his pocket, grabs something that catches the light, and holds it in front of her face. At which point, she sort of goes limp, says a few things, and then straightens up, and the two of them walk out of the shot. Mm. What about the other 12 people? Oh, did they all go in there? I'm sorry. And all I do when it came out. <clears throat> all 12 oh. went in. Oh. <laughs> right. Uh, because I got their faces on the way back out, do I recognize either of these two? You can roll me wits and streetwise difficulty nine. Is that open to anyone that can... That's anyone that can watching. see the, the iPad who, who okay. thinks they might have a shot. All right. I mean, I probably don't. I'm, I'm going to guess I don't know them being new. No. Um, I'm going to oh, try. One success. I'm, I'm waiting for the five successes for Mercy. Uh, We're all in the wrong place in the overlay. If I could ever get streetwise. Oh, somebody. Yep, yep. That's the... That's only because I didn't change things when the window closed out. Yep. Difficulty difficulty nine? Yes. Okay. 
Yep, no, that's, that's a bunch. Happen. Yep. That's not going to happen. You definitely know those people. If you had to guess, you have to guess those are vampires. It's a good guess. That's a good guess. <laughs> um, Guire and Cat, you have no idea. <clears throat> um, Simon, the blonde strikes you as familiar. It's Again, that that sensation from last night as of you have seen this person. Well, someone else said you. <laughs> God damn it. Oh. Just the helpers, everyone that I vaguely know, but I can't remember. I don't have to remember their names if I eat them. Uh, you know what? That's true. Um, <laughs> but they they seem extremely familiar, especially the face tattoos. Can I start just like spouting associations out loud to see if it jogs anyone else's? Yeah. Um, that's what Simon does. It's just like, 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 here's like vague hint to see if it sparks anyone else to recognize them. Did you trigger anything for anyone? Uh, um, unfortunately, no. The, yeah, it's like the, the two most likely would have been Wire and Destiny. These oh, like. these two <laughs> Destiny has his hands in his, his hair. Uh, the fuck did we just watch? It looks Destiny, like when, when was this video taken? Probably just watched a small child murder 12 people in a fit of rage. I have another thought. I gathered that, but when was it taken? Last night. Do we have a last night? Mm -hmm. What time? Do we have a time Roughly stamp? About 3 a.m. And to be clear, this is the place that we found, that we raided. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I have a thought. I have a theory. I don't like this theory, and I hope that I'm wrong. My guess is that those two individuals, whoever they are, are some sort of, I know this is shocking, but probably some sort of sabbat. <clears throat> who went out, made a bunch of shovel heads, and brought them in to feed to the monster. Only there was no monster. We don't know what was in there. Well... I would gather by how angry the child was coming out that they didn't like what they found. Probably not. But since I recognize the guy, can I start trying to sketch his face? Like, like do a better sketch than a CCTV camera? Yes. Give me um, intelligence and crafts. Uh, difficulty, your reference isn't that good. Difficulty eight. My reference is also memory, if I recognize him. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll go difficulty seven. Okay. Two successes. Two successes. You render a pretty decent drawing. Mm. And this would have been while they're, like, chatting. Yeah. <laughs> we have any know. idea who those are? No, I have any clues. No, I've not seen either of them, um, but... Would we be able to ask Charlotte if she uh, wanted to have an idea? I mean, if you want to venture out to Elysium tonight, you're more than welcome to. Um, I'm not sure you told me that's a bad idea. Right, that is a very bad idea. I would I would advise <laughs> others of your group going to Elysium. Sorry, what? Uh, don't worry about it. I had a very rude customer last night, and I'd rather not be in a large group of them. Tension with, with, fair enough. I have a question, uh, game game wise, out of out of game. Um, and I, since I have I have a three uh three dots and auspex for the spirits touch, can I use that to 
can I use that on a on him? Or is that just objects? Uh, oh, on Simon? Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, you can also just read his aura with two dots. Yeah, the two dots would let you read his aura. But you haven't seen Simon's aura before, so you wouldn't that you wouldn't have a anything. frame of reference to see that it's stronger. Mm-hmm. And it's already known to the group that, well, besides for um, Rahab, that Simon has at some point committed the outbreak. So, my question is, and I far be it from me to, I am not suggesting throwing an accusation around, but with the possibility that our dear Torridor Primogen is involved in this whole thing. How much do we want to keep the prince in the know? Because either we inform her that she shouldn't be telling her primogen until we until we can confirm it, or she will just provide. She will just count give this information to the, her close confidant. And neither is a good option. So you're thinking to keep things quiet to the benefit of... Just until we get more information, yes. It makes sense to me. I mean, at this point, we don't really have information to give the prince anyways. I don't think our information will do anything to help until we know more. Right now, I think it could do more harm than good. At the moment, rattling the prince's temper will only cause problems. We need more evidence before we stop presenting things. Well, I can uh, escort you to the the warehouse if you want to look at that. Not that I really moves forward your investigation. I don't think we'll find anything of particular use there, aside from the splatter marks of several shovel heads. Well, if there's... If Ghosts. There's any, if, there's yes. anything I can put, if there's anything I can put my hands on, I can try to get some information. We could go to the warehouse. Kat can look at... can converse with Ghost, and we can get a description of the younger girl, too. Assuming... That there are any ghosts there. Yes. It is surprisingly uncommon, particularly among our kind. Understandable. If we want to take a cursory look, you'd be my guest. Not a bad idea. Destiny, dear. Um, if we were to go about trying to confirm or ref- confirm one way or another the guilt of either. Uh, uh, Mr. Kellerman or or Miss Miss Morrow. How who would you suggest that we start with? In terms of ma- who we would want to make contact with to confirm this information or deny it. Oh, okay. Uh, outside of going straight to them, um, I would rather not ask a primogen. Are you currently <laughs> supplying information to the Sabah? If well, one know. of these individuals wants to, I'm more than happy to let them. Can I use the madness network to see if he feels guilty? I'm, I'm not that foolish. I would have to say I'll have to get back to you on that. I can get you a list of names of close confidants with them. Um, Elena might be a little more difficult to get anybody. She, uh, for being a social butterfly, she doesn't really land in too many flowers, if you get what I mean. You see. However, I will say that uh, Hellerman is going to be a little easier to get a hold of. 
and uh, a little easier to pinpoint down some confidants solely because as weird as that man is, he uh, is very well connected in the city. So I can get you some names. I can get some feelers out and see if I can't get you a list of people for you to talk to before the end of the night. Delightful. That's a place to start. I am hesitant about all of you uh, going out and talking to people about Elena. Solely because if accusations get out about her, they will quickly get to Simone. At which point we'll either have the uh, have the evidence we need, or we'll be uh, or we'll be risking the eye of the prince. Yeah, we don't want to do too much there until we're certain we know where to go. Mm-hmm. If we eliminate Kellerman, then that certainly makes the Crimson Mask more likely to be a choice. Eliminating the one does count as investigating the other kind of so we can put that off is there before i depart is there anything else i can help you with you wouldn't happen to have information on the regular whereabouts of mr thorne would you that i can't help with ezekiel has a small home on the upper north side and I will ask out of courtesy, do you want to deal with Nero yourself? You will think for a moment. I think I would rather leave it to my own kind. So yes, yeah, so I would like to speak to him directly. Very well. Then we'll pursue Mr. Thorne. You gather your information and let us know, and we'll go take a look for Ezekiel Thorne's place. Do you happen to have an address? He will fire off. Um, weirdly, like straight from memory, fire it off to you. All right. Let's go check out a warehouse and then get, actually, if y'all folk want to check out the warehouse, I'll go investigate Mr. Thorne. That's solid. That Using our time wisely. Works. Um, well, can I have a moment? She nods her head and tilts it to an alley. Yep. So, I had spoken with you earlier about the nature of your clan's contract. Indeed. I have a particular concern as it has been brought to my attention that your other clan mate here in the city, uh, um, Umar Orovec, I believe, oh, yes. has a ongoing contractual relationship with a member of my clan. As I mentioned, I can't take contracts out on other members of my clan, however... And I certainly would not want you to do so. My question is, in a situation, hypothetically, where... You are your you are contracted against a uh, and another member of your clan is contracted in ways that conflict what happens. We fight and we find out who wins. We will never be sent to directly assassinate each other. However, conflicts of interest in terms of competing contracts are nothing new. I see. I do believe I would like, if it is possible, to 
can track you and we can work out terms. I don't, I've never done business with your clan before, but can track you in some bodyguarding capacity. I'd be amenable to that. Delightful. I am not concerned about my clan mate. Um, that is a situation I am looking forward to resolving on my own. I simply don't want to be murdered before I do it by someone who is not even of my blood. Fair enough. We'll discuss the details some other time. Some other time, of course. All right. Do be careful. Do some investigating, she says, yes. and she'll make her way out to her motorcycle. Are you sure you want to go alone? Would you? I need to be at the. I need to be at the. Uh, the only the only member of the group that could theoretically go with me is Rahab. Correct. And I don't think that's going to be ideal for what I'm for what I'm about to be investigated. Fair enough. And yeah, he will head back to the others. Having been unsuccessful at pawning off or onto somebody else. <laughs> okay. The group splits up. The larger of the two parties walks a couple of blocks north of where they are currently. Only takes about 10 minutes for you to get there. And the thing that immediately before even rounding the corner that you notice is the U-Haul trucks are still here. Untouched. Going around the corner to the front of the warehouse, you can see the, the massive um, convex shapes in the side of the garage door style uh, entrance to the warehouse. It is still that same door with the semi-crushed handle that uh, was designed to, or not designed, but manipulated in such a way as to be easy to open. What are the four of you doing? Well, we are. Are we outside the garage or inside the? Outside. Outside. Okay. I'm solid for the rest of the group. So this is where they were transferring the dirt for the. What do you call it again? Monster. Monster <laughs> is sufficient. We don't know. I believe it was. An, I believe it was a Methuselah. Methuselah by the name of Bilabog. Yes. Was, the, was the information that, that Guire gave you. Walking death. If y'all don't mind, I'd like to go inside there and Simon's see if I can get any for, readings off anything. Simon's listening for any sound of something moving inside. By all means, I will, in order to... I doubt you're on your issue. Actually, uh, yes, let's go. There was th several thoughts that collided in my head that refused to come out afterwards. As they're, even as they're just approaching the building, Simon is listening to see if there's any kind of movement from inside the building. What? Give me perception alertness, difficulty six. Uh, you can lower that by your heightened senses, which I believe for you takes it to four. Yep. Five successes. Uh, you can hear, unlike last time you were here, you were able to hear rats scurrying and the occasional bird inside, but no human bodies. There's 
there's vermin this time. Let me just kind of says to no one in particular as they're walking up. Is that a good sign? Mm. Yes. It's, well, yes. Kind of. Probably? But that's that more means, of a wire question. Means there must, more than likely, it could mean a lot of things. It could mean that there is someone with animal, animalism there. But more than likely, it means that the animals are no longer afraid of a massive predator being there. All right. All right. Well, then I suppose we'll uh, head inside. I say yeah. walking over and opening the door and not taking a shotgun to the chest. Having no clue what on earth I'm supposed to be doing, but uh, sure. In the door, what looks what's inside? Um, so you can see a number of rats scatter the moment the door is open, but there are about 10 bodies just sort of spew like laid about everywhere. The moment you open the door, a number of birds scatter from the window into the windows. I have, we'll take half a step back before refocusing and taking a completely unnecessary, but uh, still audible deep breath and stepping into the room. And I guess start by diagnosing the bodies, cause of death. Was it drainage? Was it something more violent? Were they ripped apart? Were they vampires before they died? You know. Uh, give me just a cursory intelligence and medicine difficulty six. Actually, difficulty well, Right, have looking at them. Simon cautiously turns to Destiny. But these are vampire corpses. Is leaving, would leaving them here risk a breach of the masquerade? Do we, like, move them outside to burn in the sunlight at dawn? That is... That is one thing that we can do. That, uh, I don't know if you guys have a cleanup crew. Not really. Okay. However, I could call a few boys and we can put them on the roof. Are there... Three successes? Uh, so... The things that you immediately notice, um, there are a few who are who have been cut to ribbons. Uh, several have broken bones and like their limbs are in mangles and their their jaws are broken and their eyes have been ripped from their skull. There are two that the only injuries they have are puncture marks. Question. Any... Sorry. Good. It's okay. Uh, any weapons or objects uh, uh, left on the bodies? There's a number of, uh, a few of them have guns. Some of, um, wow. what, I li- what I like to call a uh, militia home run, a uh, baseball bat with a bunch of nails through it. Um, and there are a few that have just regular plain old knives. One of them has a machete. But were any of these, do any of these look like they were used to, uh, to, to, well, to most of each other? Most of them are gripped tightly in hands, mm-hmm. but none of them have blood on them. Okay. How long was that? Was the video section? Uh, It was about two minutes between walking in and walking out. Yeah, Celerity? Could be. Like, that that would have been awfully fast to take out ten people like this. Were they vampires 
was there any way to tell if they were vampires before they were slaughtered or if they were not really anything like that? Okay. Yeah. Have they all been they, drained? Uh, no, only two of them have been drained. So the other two were let to just bleed out. Yeah, the other the other eight were left to bleed out. Okay. Would Simon notice the two that are just drained? Yes. Quietly under his breath, um, probably so only Destiny's particularly able to hear. He's like, well, they aren't ash after being drained. Possible for Mercy to get a <gasps> idea of what happened by 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 touching the corpse. Uh, using your spirit to touch abilities. Yes. Mm-hmm. Let me look that up really quick. Because it says a corpse counts as an object in the on page one thirty seven. Okay. So you just get a glimpse mm-hmm. into the last seconds. So yeah, you can go ahead and do that if you would like. I need perception and empathy. Difficulty will go six base difficulty. Okay. Simon will pile up. Wait, Kat, don't you have a ritual for looking at a corpse's last moments? I certainly do. I'm just letting them get their things done first. Mine takes a short. Okay. So you go ahead and reach out and attempt to gain those last few moments of insight about the corpse you're touching and just nothing's coming to mind. It's like you just sort of can't make that connection. Okay. Find my sorry. It, I'm the one that rolled the dice. It's not your fault. I know. We we, we just rolled fantastically. Come on. I, yep. Yep. As evidence why that fight took a long I mean, I, I mean, yeah. I wanted I want to use it and would do something really cool, but sometimes the dice just don't roll that. Yeah. Way. They giveth and they taketh away. Oh. <laughs> All right. So the two that have been ripped particularly apart don't have eyes anymore, right? Correct. Okay. Can't do anything with them. Uh, <laughs> they do need to have eyes for me to do this. Um, All I can imagine is like you try to do the ceremony or the ritual. And you like it works. You it, you just see black, like, but you still get all of the auditory that you would have got. Uh, you just can't see. That, that there are horror movies like that. Um, <laughs> but then yeah, Kat's gonna look at the other the the remainder. Is there anything that makes any of the remaining others stand out? Um, unique wounds or, um, one that is particularly uninjured compared to the rest or one that is positioned away from the rest, anything that would make any of them stand out because she could just stare at each one for five minutes. The two that were drained are, um, one is very close to the door. The other one is a further bit of 
ways into the actual warehouse. Mm-hmm. Okay. And they are both fairly untouched. Okay. Um, and those two are two of the ones with eyes, then? Yes. Okay. Probably the first of those, then. Um, she will walk up to it. Um, take a look over the body a minute. Step over. Just sit down on the chest. Um, pull out the scalpel. Over hands a little bit. And proceed to start doing a few little carvings on uh, towards the temple areas, carving in some 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 sigils and the like, and then just jab that thing right up in that under the jaw. Okay, go ahead and ritual. Your corresponding roll. Yep, intelligence occult difficulty four. Do not botch this roll. I do not want to botch this roll, believe you me. Um, Dice, let's see, I've got it in here, I'm pretty sure, yep. Uh, I do not, oh no, I do have modifiers because I used my thing. One success. One, I only got one success. That's some bullshit, all right. Not a botch. Not a botch. It actually is a success. So I get a basic, well, that's going to be useful. A basic se- sense of the subject's death. Um, so there's that that moment where you sort of connect with the, the leftover essence of the being. Right. And it's very weird because you're not seeing anything, but you're feeling everything. Um, there is, there is the immense fear that overtakes you like fight or flight kicks in immediately. And you, all you want to do is, is flight. Okay. Your body will not move though. Okay. Um, it is as if you were made of lead and there is, a brief moment of relief and then this weird sereneness that sort of comes over you and you feel a small hand caress your cheek. And then the pierce of fangs on your neck as you jolt back into your own body. Can I huh. can I get some role to potentially get a sense of what was you I have an assumption that like maybe they were dominated to stay there or something like that. But is there anything based on how I'm experiencing this, where I would be able to get a role to, to actually I potentially identify whether that's the case or not? Roll me Wits and Occult Difficulty 7. Okay. Wits Occult Diff 7. That's better, that's 2. Um, what immediately comes to mind is dominate. Mm-hmm. To be being forced to stand still. Um, the second one, it's almost as if he was awed. You've seen this before. This is what Rahab did to Victor last night. Not just pure enrapturement with the voice. Not bringing back any bad memories at all. All right. Um, <laughs> it makes your teeth itch. Roll the frenzy. Dominate and presence. You mean old enough vampire doesn't matter, but who 
Does anybody, she, she'll speak up. I'm not as familiar with your people as you are, go figure. Anybody know any clan that might have dominate in the presence as common? I legitimately don't remember if that's the case. And Simon knows Simon just mm -hmm. talked about dumping. Uh, any of you can give me wits and occult difficulty seven. Wits and occult. Are you sure this can't be intelligence? Mm -hmm. It's a memory thing. Do I get a bonus for memory thing? I mean, I can tell you off the top uh, of my head, but I'm not there. Yeah, uh, I feel like there's one I just don't know it off. There is Diffi difficulty. What? It'll be very obvious when you realize which one it is. Seven. This is adventure. Wait, okay. presence of dominate is adventure, isn't it? This is not my night. I I should know this. My other character's adventure. And I guess it is then. Yeah, but it also makes complete sense that Cat would have. No concept of that. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Where it is? I exactly remember. Is anyone else rolling that? Uh, I was just there I was is looking no at the way my character would know. I was <laughs> looking at the eidetic eidetic memory. Um yes. merit. Um I didn't know if Mercy it, would know, but I gave it a shot. And what was the difficulty? She does it. So a Seven. Okay. Like, I'm going to be honest, Rahab might not, not even know that the ability she has is called presence. Fair. Completely fair. She she what, had done well to stay outside of the society. Does Simon's eidetic memory change anything about this role? Uh, Since he has basically a perfect memory for things. If you remember with perfect detail things you see in here. Like even the role is only if it's a stressful situation. You remember uh, something. Yeah, go ahead and uh, you can roll diff six. Okay. Two successes. Those are two key disciplines of clan Ventru. Okay. Simon will comment that that is yeah, venture, clan venture Ventru is thing. Venture is yeah. the only clan that gets both dominate and presence as their clan disciplines. I see. Does that That's jog true. Simon's memory about the blonde hair guy? Knowing that this he's likely clan venture. It does not. Okay. I mean, they're a venture in the Sabbat, so that yeah. isn't necessarily... Yes. Um, we will... Simon, just roll me a single d10. This is a, a chance thing for me to give you. Okay. Fantastic. Um, while it's not presence that did this um there's a lot of power that was used in this in this fight like a lot of power that was used in this fight if it was just a single individual potence also comes to mind I'm mean, looks around at at all of the bodies. It's like this might have also been potems. I was holding them there. Thanks. Probably. Like, I mean, Simon, Simon's, I'm, I'm as a player. I'm not sure if that's what potems does. The potence is the rip people to shreds. Yep. Discipline. Okay. Yeah. Hence the mayhem you see. It, it's it's the break bones with fingers. Or, yeah. Oh, it's what the Bruja wanted to do to me last night. Okay. Yeah. Do you, Mercy asked, you know, do they, 
do you think it was used for all of them or just for some of them? <clears throat> Would Simon have an idea? Not off the top of your head, not without having been able to see the fight. But uh, if you had to guess, the ones that are mangled, like the ones that are broken like spaghetti, mm -hmm. uh, you would you would venture they were they were probably beaten to death with with potents. Simon will walk like walks amongst the bodies, kind of kicking a few of them. Like this one's mangling, almost definitely fits potents. This one's um the two that are drained and aren't injured is the other. And the one that, so the yeah, one that Cat's not sitting on, the other one. is he yeah. like, like is he facing, like, would he have really seen the fight, or is he like turned away, like he was like running away? He trying. You don't know if he necessarily fell running away, but because it's weird to say about a human being, but he looks discarded, like he was just tossed to the side. Did did uh um did you mention that it doesn't look like it, it didn't feel like it was presence to you? Would Simon have? I thought that was what I heard said. Like, does potence hold people still? Like, it's used to break people, but uh, not in the way that Cap felt. No. Okay. Okay. Now, not not particular. Like it looks like what you described was it being held. The mangling on these potents. I mean, if I was thinking, dominate them to stay still. But yes. Oh yeah. At like, least you know. for these two. At least for the one that I experienced. I I experienced death through. Not to looking be at the. Fleet, oh yeah, downer on this whole thing. But uh, if uh, if it's got dominating potence, you're looking at Lasombra. That is really okay. That's better than what I was concerned about. To find better, um. The other op, the, the, the first that came to me, not to spill any clan secrets, I don't think it is, a, this is necessarily falls under clan secret area, but dominate and potence are both common to, to my family. Oh, good to know. Hmm. But I don't know. Presence is not one of our typical skill sets, though. You think so? The hmm. necromancers would want to keep the bodies more intact? for potential use? Not necessarily. If you wanted to, um, I don't know, prevent someone from using something like insight, that's a good way to do it. Pro tip. Interesting. If you don't Rish. want anybody experiencing the last few moments of your, of your, your, your subject's murder, mangle them. Well, it sure as hell worked on me. Remove Glad their you are able to get something. So, I will go check the other, do, do an insight check on the other one as well. The other, so I was looking sure. at the mangled bodies to see which ones have like their eyes intact. And like, and this one's limbs are broken. Does this, would that be a disqualifier? Should we get these bodies to the roof? Or yes, that, he said he had a crew for that. He had a crew yeah, yeah, some guys, or yeah. some guys that he could call up. He snaps oh. his fingers and takes a step outside. It's like that's what I was forgetting. <laughs> yeah, I will use my 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 ritual on the other uninjured, relatively uninjured by the drain. Uh, go ahead and roll it. Yep. Hopefully, I do better than the last time. Hey. I would say that's better than the last time. Um, oh, holy smokes. Where has that been? So, for rest, you've been saving up 
for this moment, apparently. Um, so that is, I mean, it only goes up to five successes, but uh, full sensory perception of the hour leading up to the target's death. This is going to suck. So yeah. you... Vampires yeah. suck. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you stab up and you feel that connection <clears throat> drawn into the body. And you are standing amongst a group of 12 individuals you don't know, all making idle chit-chat, headed back towards the warehouse. They are just walking through the streets. The two at the front, um, in juxtaposition to what you personally know is going to happen, uh, the taller gentleman is holding her hand as she skips along. Mm -hmm. Creepy. And the guy beside you says, Hey, Mikhail. Uh, you you ever get a weird feeling about those two? Like, shit's just not right. And it's very weird to feel yourself respond, but not actively give any. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean. I don't quite understand their relationship, if there is one. Um, for all I, I knew, I thought she was his boss or the other way around. But is boss right? Maybe handler? I don't know. L listen, w we've been around about the same amount of time, so I don't exactly know more than you. The guy just sort of shuts up as you, as they make their way in. And the girl stops, and everybody sort of comes to a halt. And she takes a few steps ahead as she begins investigating the U-Haul that is to the left of the building. That's not right. This has been moved. She just sort of snaps her fingers and everybody begins moving again. She walks as all of you make that turn in as she very gingerly just opens the door. You all walk in. And there's a moment of just stillness. It's It's gone. Alexei, it's gone. I swear on everything. You said everything was going to be okay. And so the blonde man just sort of holds up a hand. And in an instant, in a, a flurry that you've never seen before, the vampire immediately to her right is beyond mangled. She is moving at lightning speed and her eyes have gone completely black. This is the girl doing this. This is the girl. Okay. The the man has taken two steps back and has his hands up. Very quickly, people begin brandishing weapons and there is I, I apologize for the screaming cat. There is... Uh, <laughs> the, the cat is just pr providing an approximation of the inside of, 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 of Cat's head right now. Yep. There is a flurry of movement as she tosses another individual roughly 10 feet. Uh, one of them takes a swing with a bat with nails in it, to which she just stops with a finger. And then slits his throat with her other hand. The entire time giggling. Okay. 
and there is a moment where you see the other individual who had been drained. He goes to raise a gun to which she just sort of holds out a holds up a finger. She then spins her finger as his arm sort of twists and puts the gun to his own head. Now, 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 we don't want to do that. And you see see him fall to his knees as she just sort of walks over and runs one finger down the side of his face before plunging her her fangs into his neck. Okay. Now she draws in the blood. You you see several tentacles of shadow just lashing out at other bodies around her. That answers that question. And she she drops him and wipes the blood from her mouth and then sucks on one of her fingers and turns her attention to you. Mikhail, I need you to deliver a message for me. And the childlike face just sort of... All of you have seen serial killers. All of you have seen those demented children. That face drops. Who's ever watching and whoever's following us and attempting to thwart our plans, I would like to tell you one thing. You can't stop it. I'm sorry, Mikhail. I really am. I liked you. And I liked you a lot. She sort of, she reaches up and snaps her fingers and you feel every muscle in your body tighten. Yep. Okay. Okay. And she just walks over slowly to you, reaches up, grabs a handful of your shirt, and pulls you down. And whispers gently into your ear, we will win. The sword of Cain will flash brightly and be covered in all of the Camarilla's blood. And my father will be so, so happy. And there is instant pain in that. Yep. Embrace that you've not actually felt before. Yep. The gentle tenderness of the kiss. And when you're just on the moment of ecstasy, you are flashed back into your body. Ah, and yeah, there is an utter freak out. Jumps back off body, flies back against the wall. Bitch! I believe that is where we will end for the night. Fair enough. (laughs) Say goodbye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.